Amen. To God be the glory. Amen. To Him be all the glory. Amen. Our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Minister Smith, God who is bless. present God. with us today, and God, God bless. Minister <laughs> Capers, who is absent. To our deacons and deaconess and mother and, and sisters and brothers and all you babies, I just welcome you to the first Sunday of the year 2019. Amen. Amen. What, a, what a beautiful sight. You know, it, it, it might not mean nothing to you because you're young, but if you think back to me, Born in 1947. Wow. Mm -hmm. Been through three, war three times. Been through all kinds of things overseas and everywhere. And, but here I am, a witness to tell you how good God is. Amen. 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 What a God we say. You see, um, uh, you have to know that Paul told us uh -huh. uh, there were going to be difficult times for Christians. Mm -hmm. uh, he said there's going to be perilous times. Yes. Uh, perilous means uh, the man going to be what? The lovers of themselves. They're going to be disobedient. They're going to be disobedient to parents. They're going to be searching at the things that are no good. And if we look at it right now, we can see that in our world. I don't know if y'all uh, I know about it or pay attention to it, but Kevin Hart, who has been hosting the yeah. Oscars. Oscars Award thing, he came up on criticism uh, from the LBGT people because of something he said in 2008. And that was that if his child would be would be a, a homosexual, would hurt him to his heart, and he could do whatever he could to make sure that the child would be a homosexual. Well, he got criticized for that, saying that, and they tried trying to keep him from they, they criticized him, so he said he would step back because he didn't want the Oscars thing to be about him. But let me show you how shrewd the devil is. The devil got Ellen, the general, the general. Ellen. Ellen, the general, mm -hmm. to step in, who is a known and admitted homosexual, mm -hmm. to have him on her show and call herself a mitten to the world that she's a homosexual, and he. He jumped in the knowledge like he didn't know it. Hello? You understand what I mean? He acted like he didn't know it. That she's a homosexual and that she called the Oscar people to reinstate him. And all. We have to be careful, people, because if we say we're with God, mm -hmm. we need to stick with God. Amen. Uh, you know, I haven't been a big fan of Kevin Hart, but when he said back some time ago about the homosexual thing, I can appreciate what he was saying. But I don't appreciate him lining himself up with the devil just to be over a show. Y'all don't get that, do you? You know, you got to understand, you can't compromise with the devil to get what you want. Amen. You have to always be on the side of the Lord. And, and it is some difficult times. And for men shall be lovers of their own selves. They shall be covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemous, disobedient to parents, unthankful, and unholy. And we see a lot of unholy things that is happening around us today. I just look at the fact on the news. The, the young lady was riding in her car with her kids. And here come a, a red truck with two guys and a white guy shooting up the car and killing the little baby. You look at it right here in our own city. A young man killed his own wife. 
took a body out in, in the in the, in the woods and left it. And, you know, it, it is those perilous times, and it's going to seem difficult times for Christians. But I tell you, Jesus has already made a way for us. Mm -hmm. And I come back to share with you today that if you walk with the Lord, everything will be all right. We got to understand that he is the head and not the tail. And now on that rock, if you stand on that rock, you will always be on a solid foundation. I ask you today to join me in Ephesians 4. And when you have Ephesians 4, turn to and turn your eyes on verse 11. Ephesians 4 and verse 11. Mm -hmm. Ephesians 4 and verse 11. When you have it, you may stand to your feet and say amen. amen. We have to be careful and know that God has already prepared us for these perilous times. But a lot of us don't understand, don't know how he has he is to prepare us because we are supposed to be his hand and feet. Yeah. And if you got the spirit of Jesus in you, none of the things that is going on around us shall rock you. It should put your feet on more what? A solid ground. And know that you are standing with the Lord. If we're there right there, say amen. 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 And it reads, he gave some apostles. Some prophets, some evangelists, and some pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, till we all come into unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, that we henceforth be no more children, mm -hmm. tossed to and fro, and carried about with every wind of doctrine, by the sledge of men, and cunning craftiness, whereby they lie in wait to deceive. But speaking the truth in love, may grow up into him all things which is the head, even Christ. You may take your seats. I want to speak to you for a while on a simple subject, the magnitude of God's love. The magnitude of God's love. Yes, sir. As we were talking about the perilous times, a lot of people, they call themselves Christians or fade away from God's word and compromising with God's word, preaching things and saying things that is not of God. Hmm. And as the, my great nephew and I were sitting there watching the television evangelist on the television this morning, he was speaking and saying that uh, he's a man of God. He was talking about Saul and said that Saul and his sons were hung on this certain hill. Hmm. But see, and I pointed out to my, my nephew to open his Bible and show him that Saul and his sons were not hung. Mm -hmm. they, were, they were killed, his two sons were killed in battle. Mm -hmm. And he, in a time of running away with his armor bearer, was shot by an arrow. And when he fell off the horse, he told his armor bearer to thrust him with his sword. But the armor bearer refused to thrust him with the sword, so he took the sword and fell upon it and killed himself. See, that's why it's important for people to know the word for themselves. You see, and this is what Paul was trying to get us to see in Ephesians here. He, he, he wrote this so that we will what? See the magnitude of, of the love of God. What does magnitude mean? The 
the great size and the extent of God's love. What he did for you and I. And to let us know what the church purpose is. Uh -huh. Do you all know what the purpose of the church is? The purpose of the church is to make more disciples. We are to be the example before the rest of the world and show them that God is love. In this letter, Paul explains the wonderful things that we have received through Christ and refers to the church as a body, a temple, a bridge, and a soldier. Ah, uh, let's look at the last one. A soldier is do not entangle himself with the things of this world. Mm -hmm. You don't get excited about what's happening. When Jesus, uh, when they called and told Jesus, came and told Jesus that Lazarus was dead, yeah. did Jesus get excited? No, he didn't. No, he didn't. He tarried, what, two more days. Yeah. See, we got to learn that if we are planted, on a solid rock with Christ, we have got to get excited about the things that happen because there is nothing new under the sun. Everything that is going on now has already happened. But people get so upset and uptight and, and forget about what they are supposed to be doing that they forget to do the will of the Lord. Amen? Amen. Amen. We, we see now, John 3, 16, God so loved the world that he gave what? His only, His only begotten son. That whosoever believed. Look at what he did. He wanted us to simply believe on Christ. That Christ died on that cross. And, but the main thing is that he rose again. And he rose and he sent back a comforter to live and you and me. Mm -hmm. What does that mean? That comfort living in you causes you to do the work of Jesus Christ. But we want to sit back and complain about everything instead of going out and doing what God wants us to do. Amen? All right. Amen? All right. Now I want you to just let right in Romans 1, I mean Romans 5, in verse 1, look at this for a moment. <laughs> mm -hmm. Romans uh, 5 and verse 1. You see, Paul is, is laying it out here for us. He says, It is reported commonly that there is fornication among you and such for fornication that is not so much as name among the Gentiles that one should have his father's wife. See, we got to be, um, we got to be notable about the things that is going on what? Among us. Because we are the light of the world and people are watching and see the things that we're doing. But a lot of our churches, there's a lot of things going on in our church houses that don't even make sense. And Jesus said it in uh, Ephesians 4, where I read you from. He told us exactly what he had given us and why he had given us. Well, if you look at Ephesians 4, he said, therefore, the I, therefore, the prisoner of the Lord. What the mean prisoner? He is dedicated to doing the what? The will of God. I beseech you that you walk worthy of the vocation wherewith you are called. I, I beg you to do what God has called you to do. And, and I hear people say something about, he, he haven't called me. I remember my ex made that statement. Uh, I haven't been called to preach. He is the preacher. But we all have what? Been called. And we have to realize that, that we have been called. And with all loneliness and what? Meekness. With long silence. Walk and humble yourself. With meekness unto the Lord. Not unto the world. Don't give in to the world. Look at the glorious thing. He did it just for who? Us. He did it just for us. Christ died so that we can have the privilege of being what? A servant. Y'all don't see that? Mm -hmm. But he wants us to walk with loneliness and meekness and with long suffering. Forbearing 
one another in love, and endowing to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. Have peace with your sisters and brothers. Don't get all wind up and go worthy on somebody that say something that you don't like. Hello? Mm -hmm. Keep the spirit of Christ in you at all times. There is one body, one spirit, even as you are called in one hope of your calling. The Lord, I mean, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God, and Father of all, who is above all, and through all, and what? Mm -hmm. In you all. Christ is there, you just have to let him have what? His way. That's why he says in Matthew 11, 28, uh, I'm unto me, all you that labor in heaven, I will give you what? Rest. Let the world of things go and come unto the what? The Lord. He will give you that peace in everything that you have to. He says, learn of me. And I will give you what? Rest. Rest. You will learn that my burdens are what? Life. And my yoke is easy. It's easy to follow God's will. It's easy to do his will. The world going to come against you. But he tells you in Isaiah 54 and verse 17, No weapon formed against you shall prosper. But we get all excited and get worried, worried about things. But look at the glory state God has given us. He has given us what? Jesus Christ. Amen. He is your what? Your strength. He is your power. But a lot of us want to throw our power down and join in with the world. Look at verse 7. But unto every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. You are given grace according to how you know Christ for your what? Self. You need to know him for yourself. If you know him a little bit, a little bit of grace. Hello? Y'all see that? Let's read it again. But unto everyone of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of what? Christ. So if you don't know Christ, you're not going to have any what? Grace. And what is grace? That undeserving what? You don't deserve it. But Christ died so that we can have and receive that grace. And he said now, wherefore, he says, when he ascended up on high, he left captivity captive, captive and gave gifts to every man. Christ went to heaven. Okay? And sent back the Holy Spirit. And he sent back and gave gifts to what? To all men. Where he ascended up to on high, he led captivity captive and gave gifts unto men. Now that he is ascended, the Spirit has come down. What is it but that he also also but that he also descended first into the lower parts of the earth. He that descended is the same also that ascended up far above the heavens, that he might fill all things. And this is why I want to pay attention. And he gave some apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors, and some teachers. And what was the purpose? For the perfecting of what? The saints. The saints. Mm -hmm. To teach the saints how to be Christ-like. Mm -hmm. But you look at our churches now. Uh, the, all these churches, I am bishop so-and-so. I am doctor so-and-so. I am reverend this and that. Reverend, I don't see reverend nowhere in the Bible. If you find it, please let me know so I can eat it. Hello? But we have gone against God's word and given our own self titles. God wants us to be what? Lowly. Paul just told you on the, uh, in the well, beginning of the chapter that he wants us to walk what? 
lonely and humble under him. Stop trying to puff your what? Self up. Just do the will of the Lord for the perfection of the saints for the work of the what? Ministry. Right there. We only have one ministry. But what we get the same from women ministry, men ministries, children ministry. There's only one ministry, and that's the ministry of Jesus Christ. And that is to love you. <laughs> one another, as I have loved you. When I keep that commandment, I am doing the ministry of Jesus Christ. I'm feeding you when you're hungry for the word. I'm feeding you when you're hungry for bread. Mm -hmm. Hello? That is the ministry of Jesus Christ. Not all this other stuff that people are laying on you. And they say now, and for perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. But look at a lot of churches. They want to build a big, their own big churches in their name right. instead of building up the church of Christ. It is not about James Bowman. It is about Jesus Christ. And we have to get to, get to know this by ourselves. All these big up, them building these big old churches and everything. But what are you doing in the garden of God? How many roses are you tending every day? How many, how many petunias are you helping to bloom? Do you understand what I'm saying? You know, are you doing the will of the Lord? As we saw in our Sunday school lesson this morning, if you, he said, the least you do unto this little one, you do it also unto me. Then the least you do not unto the little one, you do it also not unto me. So what he's trying to tell us, we need to get our act in, in order and start serving and being the hands and feet of Jesus Christ. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's an edifying in the body of Christ. Till we all come in what? The unity of the faith. Until everybody what? Get it. Get it. See, a lot of people forget Isaiah 29. The Lord said that I, a lot of you serve me with your lips. Your heart is far but your heart is far from me. See, I can get up here with all these enticing words and have you falling over and, and laughing and joking and going on and, and, and hollering amen. But what good is it if I haven't taught you how to do the will of the Lord? See, as a Christian, our job is to be the hand and feet of which Jesus Christ. Yeah. To go out and save souls and allow them to get to know Jesus Christ for themselves. First Corinthians said, until we all come in the unity of what? Right. Faith. That they believe that Jesus is alive and well. Yes, he died on the cross. But he must be seen in us so that others will know that he's still what? Alive. And of the knowledge of the Son of God, unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. Wow, well, what that mean, Pastor Bone? Jesus fed 5,000 plus. So guess what? We should be trying to feed 5,000 plus. And Jesus raised. Lazarus' daughter from the dead. So what should we be doing? You got a lot of dead folks walking around out there. Hello? Do y'all know what I mean? We are in the business of saving souls. Bringing them unto Christ. But how can we bring them to Christ if we compromise and walk in the midst of them and doing the things that they are doing? You know, I don't need all these titles. I don't need to be in the newspaper and all that. I had to tell a couple of people the other day uh, uh, about saying Reverend. And I was up at the courthouse, and uh, the young lady said, All right, Reverend Bowman. The young man said, Yeah, Reverend Bowman. I said, Come here, baby. Come here, guys. Let me tell you something. I said, Whatever.
whatever you can call me James, you can call me brother, you can call me pastor, but don't call me reverend. I said, why not? I said, find reverend in the Bible for me. And then your man said, you know, he's not there. I said, that's right. So don't call me reverend, call me pastor. I am a pastor who is leading God's people, being the example before them. Doing what God wants us to do. And the man, the man said, you're right, Pastor Bone. I can appreciate it. Thank you. I never call you everything. See, but we got to stand on God's what? Word. People all want to hear the truth, but they're being caught up by uh -huh. these, these fables. These, these prosperity preaching. Mm -hmm. Tell them, oh, God is going to bless you with this. But they forget to tell you that it's a ministry you got to do. The ministry of Jesus Christ, you got to do some work. Amen. You, this thing don't just come automatically. Just because he died. But if you don't believe in work, guess what? You dead. Amen. Hello? Are y'all with me? Amen. And then there's now, um, uh, unto the measure of the standard of the fullness of Christ. That means we all become like little Jesus. Walking around, helping one another, doing the will of the Lord. And it says that we henceforth be no more children, tossed to and fro, carried away with every wind of doctrine. See, man is standing around the corner doing all these good things to pull you in, to sucker you out of what God has blessed you with. See? With this current craftiness. You understand? I, 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 I still, you know, I, I know I'm going to get criticized with this, but I don't care. I still don't know why we allow miming, miming in God's church. Huh? Nothing is phony about God. Why you got to fire, hide your face from God? Hello? If you find that Moses hid his face, Back in the Old Testament. Mm -hmm. But when Christ come, all that went away. There's nothing here about God. Hello? But what are we teaching our children? We're teaching them to, to bring the worldly thing into the church. All these crazy dances that go on over in the church. All of this is about dancing. Okay? Flooding themselves. That's not the worship of God. The worship of God is that we love and take care of one another. That's what God wants us, how he wants us to worship him. He wants me to look out for my sisters and brothers, if you want to put it in simple terms. And it says now, carrying about to every way in doctrine by the sledge of men. Men are bringing all kinds of stuff into the church house. You better say that don't make what? Sense. Don't make sense. A lot of things are just for what? Fundraisers. You got all these programs out here. All it is is fundraisers. There's two ways to bring funds into the house of the Lord. Now God three tells you there's tithes and offering. If everybody bring their, their tenth within, whew, we can free up the people from welfare. If we do what God wants to do, if every church was feeding the hungry, not only the hungry for food, but the hungry for the word. Mm -hmm. Because one thing about the word is just like the old saying that man has, I can give you a fish a day mm -hmm. to keep you alive. But if I teach you how to fish, bye, bye, bye. you can... <laughs> You can live for yourself. See, we got to understand how God works. God wants us to be that living sacrifice just like Jesus was. He wants us to give up self for our sisters and our brothers. And uh, he's about a sled of men and curling craftiness, whereby they lie and wait to deceive. But speaking the truth and love may grow up into him 
in all things which is the head in Christ. I come by to tell you the magnitude of God's love is simply that you and I believe on him mm -hmm. and share with the word that Jesus is alive and well. Mm -hmm. The one that I'm talking about is Mary's baby. Mm -hmm. The Bible will tell you that he was born of a virgin in a town called Bethlehem. Yes, sir. He, he, in, he walked this way for 33 years. And he talked for three years. And in that 33 years, he only went a 300 mile radius. But by in his teaching and making disciples, the word spread it all over the world today. So just cause the world looks like it's in the handbasket on the way to hell. Don't you give up. Amen. You keep on telling people that Jesus is alive and well. And let him be seen in you. That is the magnitude of God's love. He loved us so much that he allowed Jesus to come into a city called Jerusalem on a Friday evening. Mm -hmm. Riding on a donkey, being lonely and humble and meek. And they all was amazed that he come in so lonely because they saw the, the magnitude of the things that he had done. But they laid down their palm trees, they laid down their fruits, mm -hmm. and they was crying, Hosanna, 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 Hosanna the highest. Mm -hmm. They was giving him the highest praise because of the things they had seen when he done. But one thing about it, we see things, but we yet what? Doubt. Because the next Thursday evening, that same crowd, was saying, crucify him, <coughs> crucify him. And they took my father from the Garden of Gethsemane and took him over to Caiaphas' house. Mm -hmm. And the Bible said they pushed him around and they beat him and talked about him and spit up on him. Mm. And they took him over to Pilate's house. Mm -hmm. And Pilate said, what do you want me to do with this <coughs> They explained to him what he had done. Pilate questioned him and said, Are you the king of the Jews? And Jesus simply said, You said it. We have to learn to stand on God's word like Jesus' words. You said it. And Pilate questioned him, and Pilate's wife said, Pilate, you need to take your hands off this man. Because I had a dream that this is a man of love. Good God. Hello? And Paul said, I washed my hands of this man because I can find no fault. Amen. You see, you can't find no fault in Jesus except what? Love. And, and, and the Bible says, Paul said, but I tell you what, I, every year I give you a prison. And I have two prisoners in custody. I have this one that you have accused by the name of Jesus, and I have Barabbas, who is a murderer, a thief. He said, whom do you choose? And guess what they choose? They chose Barabbas. Just like a lot of the people today, they're choosing the world of things over Jesus Christ. And the Bible said they took him back to Caiaphas' house. <laughs> They spit upon him and they put a crown of thorns on his head and blood run down his brow. And they beat him all night long. Then early Friday morning, they placed a cross on my father's shoulder. Yes, yes. And they started parading him through the street uh -huh. of Jerusalem. And the Bible said he going through the room, he fell down. But for your sakes and mine, I thank God he got it. He made it up to got off the hill. And they tell me they they took his life, but the, my scene that he laid down his life. Yeah. Because yeah. he had the power. <laughs> but he laid down his life. He allowed the man that he loved so much to put nails in his hand. Yeah, yeah. 
nails in his feet. Yeah. And the Bible said they stretched him wide. Wow. And they hung him high. Yeah. And the Bible said he stayed on that cross from the sixth to the ninth hour. And the Bible said also said that he was between two feet. Yes, sir. You see, it was a custom back then that they would crucify those that did anything they considered wrong. Mm. And the one thief on the left said, if you be the son of God, get down off this cross and come and take us down. And the other thief on the right said, you shall ever leave this man alone. <laughs> you and I deserve what we are getting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. See, just like a lot of us, the things that we're going through now, we deserve what we're getting because we're not walking with the Lord. We're not doing what God wants us to do. He said, don't mess with that man. We deserve what we're getting. And he said, Master, remember me. When you get in my kingdom. Yes, yes. Jesus looked at him and said, This day, I shall be in paradise with me. And he stayed on that cross from the sixth to the ninth hour. But before he gave up the ghost, he said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And he gave up the ghost. And they pierced him in the side, and out came blood and water. Mm. And they took him down off the cross, and they buried him in a barbary tomb. Mm -hmm. And they threw a roll of big rock in front of yeah, the tomb. Yeah, yeah. The Bible says he stayed there all night Friday night. He stayed there all day Saturday. Yeah, he yeah. stayed there all night Saturday night. But early Sunday morning, he got up with all power. Oh. Look at the magnum tool of God. Oh, God. He allowed his son to rise oh. and send that Holy Spirit back to you and I so that we can what? Live! Amen. Thank you, Lord. Yes. Thank you, Lord. So it's your choice. You can live or die. Oh. As for me and my house, yes, sir. we're going to serve the Lord. Yes, sir. Amen. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It's a magnum tool yes, sir. of God's love. Okay. Yeah. There might be somebody here.